40% downtime, 12% scrap, $3.6 million swirling down the drain every single year. Imagine a digital teammate that watches every sensor, every order, every maintenance log, and then fixes problems before you even knew they existed. That teammate is an AI agent. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what that means, how it works with a unified namespace, and the first AI agent you should deploy for the biggest win. This video is brought to you by Siemens. More on them later in this video. Hey, I'm Zach with 4.0 Solutions. In the last video, we unpacked the model context protocol for industry. If you missed that, you can watch it here. The rule book that tells us the large language models, but in essence, it is the rule book that tells large language models how to think in a factory and what tools it can interact with, what services. Today, we're giving that model a body and a brain and putting it all together to work on the plant floor. So what is an AI agent? Think of it as a digital coworker with three superpowers. It has its senses, it thinks, or reasons, and then it acts. It senses by subscribing to real-time topics in your unified namespace. The same MQTT hierarchy that your PLCs, your CMMS, already published to. It thinks by running a reasoning loop inside of a large language model or similar, purpose-built model that is trained to achieve a specific outcome. It could be a general purpose model or it could be a specific model for a specific use case, trained on your own data or trained on an industry standard. But it has the ability to set a goal, it plans a action, and then it takes the steps necessary to execute that goal. Then it checks the results and repeats until the goal is hit. So you can have agents that deploy once, run a process, and then terminate, or you know they're no longer in existence. Or you can have agents that run 24 seven, checking and monitoring topics. You can have agents that call other agents. It can get real messy really quickly. So let's kind of show you how to get your first quick win. The key is it's gonna be interfacing with your unified namespace, subscribing to and publishing topics back to using uh, MCP API, just like a human would by typing a command, but at machine speed and scale. Now here's a quick mental picture. Now here's a quick architecture diagram. At the bottom are your machines, historians and other business OT and IT systems, all publishing and subscribing to data in the unified namespace. Floating above that river of events is the agent brain. It's a containerized service with access to a vendor database for long-term memory, a rules engine for safety guardrails, and a scheduler that lets it juggle multiple goals. On the surface is a human interface. It could be Microsoft Teams, a web dashboard, a voice assistant could be built into other applications, could be a simple chat GPT interface. So you can see what the agent is thinking and approve its actions or tell it to stand down. Nothing proprietary, nothing exotic. It's just another microservice with the same citizenship as everything else on the network. All of your citizen developers, an AI agent is just a supercharged one. To make that picture real, let's walk through four true to life stories. But first, a quick shout out to today's sponsor. Siemens, the folks behind Somatic WinCC open architecture. If you still think of WinCC as just SCADA, well buckle up. WinCC OA is a full-blown IIoT platform built for the biggest, baddest, and most connected facilities on the planet. It's vendor and platform agnostic, so you can layer it over whatever PLC, Edge, Box, or Cloud Stack you're already running. We're talking high performance, distributed networking that scales from a single edge device all the way to a multi-site global rollout. Unlimited clients, unlimited tags, web, iOS, Android, you name it. Security, WinCCOA's got it locked down. And because it's object oriented at the core, you engineer once and reuse everywhere, cutting your deployment time while future-proofing your stack for edge analytics, AI, and anything Industry 4.0 can throw at you. Bottom line, if you want a control layer that's as ambitious as your digital transformation roadmap, check out Siemens WinCCOA. There's a link in the description and tell them 4.0 Solutions sent you. Now back to the video. First, a predictive maintenance agent. It subscribes to vibration and temperature streams from every rotating asset in your facility. When the model forecasts a bearing failure in 42 hours, the agent opens a work order in the CMMS, orders a replacement part, slots the repair onto the next planned changeover. By doing this, one automotive plant watched unplanned downtime fall by nearly a third in the first quarter. Second, 
a quality vision agent. Cameras drop raw images into the namespace. PLCs publish the process parameters, and the agent mixes both to fine tune pass or fail thresholds on the fly. In this example, a manufacturer can leverage this workflow to reduce scrap waste without touching a single PLC line of code. Third example that we have, a dynamic scheduling agent. It drinks live machine state topics, feeds them into a reinforcement learning optimizer, and republishes a fresh job sequence to the MES every five minutes. So not only are you able to get higher capacity and utilization on your machines by optimizing your schedule in real time, but you're also making the life of your scheduler much easier. Walker has said it many times before, the scheduler is the most valuable person in the plant. If they get hit by a bus, your manufacturing environment is screwed. Consider using an AI agent to help automate some of your schedule's manual tasks. It doesn't have to automatically go out to production. The AI agent can make a recommendation to your scheduler and the scheduler can approve or not approve that recommendation. I mean, this is the manufacturing holy grail and we've been talking about it for many years and it's finally here with AI agents. What is the manufacturing holy grail? Really quick, everything and everyone is plugged into the network. The layers of the business are all integrated and operate from all of the data and information from all the other layers in real time. Stakeholders know the future state of the business in real time. You're leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyze current state to predict future outcomes. Artificial intelligence makes recommended adjustments to improve operational outcomes, and then your stakeholders approve or deny those operation adjustments that were recommended from AI. I mean, that's literally the manufacturing holy grail that we've been saying for years, and it's finally here. No, it's no longer a pipe dream. So you can see massive improvements in the workflow. Fourth example, an energy optimizer. It cross-references real-time power meter data with production demand and predicts the next utility price spike and shifts non-critical workloads to off-peak hours. A manufacturing plant that did this saved more than 400 and shifts non-critical workloads to off-peak hours. By doing this, you could drastically reduce the electricity costs that you're paying or increase the rebates that your electricity company offers you for shedding load, all without replacing a single piece of hardware. Just by leveraging AI agents that sit on top of your contextualized data and is able to process and make recommendations in real time. I mean, that's the power of the AI agents, and that's really why you need a unified namespace. The biggest fear we have is that manufacturers will just jump straight into deploying AI agents as point solutions, and they will skip the important part of creating the data foundation, the data infrastructure that unlocks the potential of your AI agents. You don't wanna be doing more data silos or more point solutions. Get the unified namespace foundation and then start playing around with AI agents that sit on top of it. Start small and simple, maybe a single agent that does a single task, and then start creating your AI agent org chart. So think about the different departments that you have. You have quality, you have production, you have finance. Each department may have an AI agent that is in charge of that department, and then it has other AI agents that do specific tasks within that department. But be careful with this. You don't wanna create a, a nightmare of spaghetti AI agents that all just cross talking and you don't know what the heck is actually happening. You gotta have a nice architecture first, and then you gotta have an organized way of deploying these AI agents and orchestrating them. There are a lot of tools for that, and you can also do it yourself as well too. There's gonna be a ton of companies that are coming out in this layer, but again, make sure you don't skip this layer. Now, before you sprint to GitHub, a cautionary tale. The biggest reason AI agent pilots die is data sprawl. If your systems are glued together with point-to-point -point APIs, the agent has no single source of truth, spends half of its time reconciling conflicts, and eventually gives up. The cure is front-loading the unified namespace, one topic tree, one timestamp, one version of reality. Only then can the AI agent act with confidence. I mean, think right now, your humans are spending 30% of their time switching between different applications just to get the data that they need to do their job because you don't have a unified namespace. You deploy AI agents, they're gonna be doing the same thing. Two more traps to watch out for. Number one, skipping advisory mode. Always start with agent writing suggestions, not commands and letting the stakeholder approve those suggestions. Let the humans bless or veto its choices until the metrics prove it's safe. And number two, neglecting continuous evaluation. Feed agent synthetic test messages every day. If it drifts, you'll spot it before production does. If you learned something in this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Ready to launch? Start small. Draw your topic hierarchy on a whiteboard. Pick one painful KPI, downtime, scrap, energy. Fine tune a lightweight language model so it understands your plants slang so it understands your plant's naming structure. Deploy the agent in a read-only 
and watch its recommendations for a week. When they consistently beat the baseline and consistently giving you good results, flip the switch to try right access and let it fly. If this sparks ideas, smash that like button, but don't bounce yet. Drop the KPI you wanna automate first in the comments. If there's an example that really stands out, we'll consider doing a specific video just on that use case. And if you want the full blueprint, head over to our IIoT University. The three-day unified namespace workshop shows you the foundation for how to build a unified namespace. And the mastermind program takes it to the next level and unlocks all of the training that we offer at IIoT University, including the edge integration to unified namespace workshop that we're doing this month. So make sure you go head over and check that out. It's gonna be amazing. We just announced a giveaway. So the link to that will be in the description. Now remember, digital transformation isn't about prettier dashboards. It's about doing more with less and protecting middle-class jobs. That's what our goal here is at 4.0 Solutions. I'm Zach with 4.0 Solutions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.